Welcome to Baji Guru Vidang Runde. I'm Gary Uriawan. Today I want to talk about travel photography using Micro Four Thirds camera. Just to give you some perspective, I'm not a full-time photographer. I'm just a hobbyist photographer. Nevertheless, I hope what I'm about to share is going to be useful for you and help you to gain some useful information about travel photography that you can use to improve your photography in general. First, let's define what is travel photography for me. How can a photograph be classified as a travel photograph? For me, travel photography is basically taking a picture of an interesting object of something that you found during your travel. These travel photographs can form in a different types of photography. They can be landscape, portrait, street, close-up, and much more other different types of photography. But sometimes it's also going to be an environmental portrait with someone who travel together with you. It could be an environmental portrait of your wife or husband with a beautiful Alps mountain in the background, or a picture of your family on a beautiful sunset with a beach on the background, or a picture of a stranger that caught your eyes in Japan on the busy street, or just simply a beautiful view of a skyline of a city during blue hour. Now, that brings us to what creates a great travel photograph. For me, what makes a great travel photography is not just about the visual or the beauty of the photo itself, but also about the storytelling of the photograph. The photograph needs to be able to tell a story about where you go, what's happening, and some other information about your travel. As an example, a simple picture of a scenery won't do it for me. Take a look at this picture. This picture doesn't tell much, does it? I mean, it only tells that I'm in some kind of a river or a fjord and I'm taking a picture of a mountain with a blue sky. Now compare this picture with this other picture that I take around the same time and the same place, but just with a different angle. You can now tell more things that are happening in the picture, right? You can now probably guess that I was riding a boat the boat was cruising and I was taking a picture inside the boat of a scenery from a river or a fjord and getting a beautiful mountain with a blue sky. I mean, now there are more elements in the photo that helps to tell you a more complete story of my travel. Now you may have heard as the old saying goes, a picture worth a thousand words. Well, it is true. Your photograph must be able to do exactly just that. It needs to be able to tell a story with just a single picture. Now another example is this photo here. You can clearly tell that it's a beautiful rose. But the picture doesn't really tell much, does it? Now let's back up a little, zoom out a little, and then recompose the picture, and let's take another shot. Suddenly, you have a beautiful scenery that tells so much more about your travel rather than just a single picture of a rose. The picture was taken around the same time at the same place where I took the picture of the rose. But let's not stop here. I can probably add something more into this photo. Let's find another composition nearby, put a foreground of interest, and recompose the picture to make something even more interesting. Suddenly, you have a picture that's even more interesting than before. Without me describing it to you, you can probably tell that this picture has so much more information than the picture before. You can now feel the atmosphere and the feeling of the place where I took the picture. And that's exactly what I want from this picture, to be able to tell a more complete story about my travel. I mean, sure, people will definitely love the bokeh picture of the rose that I took earlier. The bokeh picture is nice because bokeh picture can provide an interesting detail, a very nice close-up about something that's happening during your travel. However, always balance them with wider picture that has a lot more information about your travel, so that you can also bring back some more memories and feelings about your travel. Now, I will touch the subject of gear. Ultimately, gear doesn't matter that much. These days, you can hardly go wrong with any new camera. But I really find that Micro Four Thought system really brings a lot of benefit here 
when we're talking about travel photography. With Micro Four Third system, I found the perfect balance between size, weight, image quality, and performance in a single package. And if you use the newer Panasonic cameras, you'll get the added bonus of being able to record high quality video footage using the same camera that you use to take still picture. This makes it a win in my book. I usually travel with two bodies along with three to four lenses maximum when I go traveling. And sometimes I'll even bring my speed light too if I want to take an off-camera flash environmental portrait like this. Using the Micro Forte system, the total weight of my camera system will not consume too much of the carry-on restriction of 7 kg. However, depending on the location that I will visit, I will probably carry more or I can also probably carry less gear. If I really need to, I can get by with just carrying one body with one lens. Or I can even switch to a compact camera like this Panasonic LX100 that I'm filming with right now. With the Panasonic LX100, I can take great still picture as well as record some high quality video footage during my travel with a small compact package. Now the main thing with travel photography is always try to keep everything compact and as lightweight as possible. Carry only what you need. Don't get tempted to pack every photo gear that you have into your bag, even if you can. Carefully choosing your gear will not only help to save weight on your carry-on luggage, it will also force you to prepare better for your travel photography. That will make you enjoy both of the travel experience and also the travel photography process in general. Now I'm going to share some of my favorite gear that I use for travel photography. I usually travel with two camera bodies, the Panasonic GX7 and my main camera, the Panasonic GX8. With the Panasonic GX8, I usually have one permanent lens that I attach to it that I'll use as my main lens. While on the GX7, I'll have another lens that will complement the main lens on the GX8. So for example, if the GX8 uses a normal focal length, the GX7 will use an ultra-wide lens or a ultra telephoto lens to cover this focal length. For so many years, my favorite lens on the GX8 is this lens, the 12-35mm f2.8. This lens does everything from landscape to environmental portrait to street photography to close up and semi macro. The image stabilizer on this lens also works really well to help reduce some camera shape. Also, the autofocus is really quick, the close up capabilities are really good, and it's just an overall sharp, high performing lens. Another favorite for the GX8 is this 14 to 140mm f5.6 lens. So, this lens can go from a normal wide to a telephoto in a single sweep, like this. So this lens is my choice when I don't want to carry another telephoto lens so that I can save some space in my luggage. It's reasonably sharp, it has a great autofocus as well as a great stabilizer. While the lens is very versatile in terms of focal length, it's a little bit slow at f5.6 compared to the f2.8 of the 12-35mm. Both of these lenses are good for video because they have image stabilizer. However, Lately, I've been experimenting to go ultralight with my Panasonic GX8. So now, I use my Panasonic Leica 15mm f1.7 with my Panasonic GX8. This is my new favorite lens, and if I had to choose only one focal length, it will be 15mm because it can do so much thing. This lens is very sharp, the autofocus is very fast. And although you cannot zoom, this focal length is very versatile for so many different things. And also, the f1.7 aperture is large enough so that it can help you to create more thin depth of field effect or to help with the low light performance. However, this lens doesn't have image stabilizer, so unless you are using the newer Panasonic bodies, it's not gonna be helpful for shooting video unless you have a tripod. 
because without image stabilizer, it's gonna create shaky footage. Another choice for the GX8 is this 20mm f1.7. So I use this lens if I want something tighter than the 15mm. This lens is basically performing the same as the 15mm with the exception of a slightly slower autofocus. As for my GX7, there are a few lenses that I usually put on it to complement the main lens that I put on the GX8. My current favorite is this Laowa 7.5mm f2 ultra wide angle lens. This is a manual focus ultra wide angle lens with a relatively large f2 aperture. What's great about this lens is the very small size, so it's really easy for me to just bring it on travel. And combined with the sharp image quality as well as the compact size and the large aperture, it can take great landscape pictures. And with that F2, I can even take some great astrophotography pictures with this lens. Another favorite lens for the GX7 is this 35 to 100 mm f5.6 telephoto lens. This is the lens that I bring if I don't want to carry the 14 to 140 mm lens. This lens is very compact, it's sharp, it has fast autofocus, and the telephoto range is enough for me for most cases during travel. Now for your information, I never bring all of these lenses together during travel. That will be too much for me. Usually, I only bring 3 to 4 lenses maximum. Last time I went traveling to Japan in 2017, I only bring the GX8, the GX7, the 15mm f1.7, the 7.5mm Laowa lens, and also the 35-100 to f5.6. With just 3 lenses, I can cover the entire trip and create stunning beautiful pictures during the trip without having to carry so much gear. So that is all for today's video. I hope you find this video to be useful. Please like, share, and comment on this video as well as subscribe to my channel. Also, don't forget to check me out on Instagram as well as my photography blog with the link in the description below. Thanks and goodbye.